Bed rockers, how you doing? It's me, your boy Waddles. Welcome back. Brand new Bedrock Beta today. Today, Bedrock Beta, these names are getting too long to read here, dropped. This is a pretty big beta. With the cave update betas and snapshots, I've been trying to only make videos on the betas when they're actually like different, unique, or kind of big. And this week is one of those big betas. Like we did with the snapshot yesterday, today we're gonna check out the beta. If you enjoy it, drop a like on this video and subscribe. Or don't. I guess. All right, so this beta is luscious for sure. A bunch of brand new blocks have been added to better Edition in this week's beta. Check it out. Inside of this chest is everything new. All of these new things have to do with the Lush Caves. This is kind of just like the Lush Cave snapshot that we saw a couple weeks ago on Javi Edition. But also, it's not. Not at all. So, here we are in this gigantic mountain range that I showed off in the mountain climbing video. We have new world generation in the snapshot. This time, the world gets a whole lot deeper. Now, I'm pretty sure this is only going to happen in newly generated chunks, so not this chunk, but I'd like to test this out. So what we're going to do is just dig straight down. Uh, if this generation has changed here, we should be able to go into the negative Y range and find blocks. If it's not changed here, we'll just go really far away and check it out. Uh, no. Oh my gosh. What? This is crazy! This is crazy! Okay, wow, so there's bedrock down here going down into the negative Y range? This is crazy. Now, the reason that this is kind of a big deal is because on Java Edition, worlds loaded in earlier versions of the game just don't let you actually load it. Like, for example, the Minecraft Guide World, I can't load that in the latest snapshot right now because it's not supported. So this is how it's done? Is this how it's going to be done on Java Edition? Just a bunch of bedrock be below the old world? I mean, I, I, I would be okay with that. That's so interesting. So that's what happens there in previously generated chunks, like the chunks that I'm in right now. Let's say maybe I was like really, really far away though. Like just to be sure that I'm like far enough away, we're gonna go all the way out to 10,000, 10,000. Uh, game don't crash, don't crash. I'm lagging really bad in this beta, by the way. Big warning. All right, well, it's been about a minute now, and I'm still in a void, so hopefully, eventually, this will catch up. Uh, just chilling here in the void, though. It's pretty nice out here. Can't lie. Okay, well, uh, a couple more minutes later, nothing is happening still, so I think we're gonna have to make a new world and check this out. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Bedrock Edition. GG, GG, GG. I'm out here just, just chilling with the Elytra. I'm not going anywhere, though. I, okay, okay, enough of this. Now, if you want to check out these new deep worlds, you have to enable this caves and cliffs toggle right here, and you have to be in the beta, of course. If you don't do this, that's not going to work. All right, so brand new world. This is the spawn. <gasps> this is the spawn of the world. Okay, this is crazy. He here's the world seed if you like this world and you're curious. It's right there. Oh, that's crazy, but check this out. So now we have a brand new world, which means the chunks down low will actually be interesting. If we keep digging down in here, we're going to find current caves, meaning caves that aren't the cave update caves, and then just a bunch more blocks. So right now we're at 13. If we keep going down, we're going to enter into the negative Y range and yep, no deep slate or anything like that. It's all just stone right now, but structures and caves and things can actually generate down there. Once you get all the way down to negative 64, you will find bedrock or close to negative 64. And then below the bedrock, it's nothing. It's the void. The world in this snapshot just got deeper. No new caves or deep slate or anything like that, though. That is actually so interesting how the game does it, though. It just generates a gigantic chunk of bedrock under chunks that have been generated previously. I'm wondering if that's the final generation and what's going to happen. Uh, like, will we see that on Java Edition like that or will it be different? That'll be really, really interesting to see. Moving on, next we have the Lush Caves features. All of these things right here. Now, uh, if you've been following the Java snapshots, I will say that the Lush Cave features that have been added in this Bedrock Beta do seem to be basically identical. We are still gonna go through them pretty quickly, but if you've been following the snapshots, you already know what this is. Now, as to be expected, the Lush Caves and also the Dripstone Caves, they still do not generate. So the features are in, you'll need access to creative mode and experimental features in general to actually see these things. We'll start with the most boring feature probably, which is going to be Rooted Dirt, a brand new dirt type. This is what it looks like right here. It's a little different. It kind of looks like jungle wood mixed into coarse dirt. 
I mean, you try and tell me that this dirt right here isn't the combination of these two blocks. It's impossible. It is. Now, if you bone meal this block, you will get the brand new hanging root plant item thing. This is the hanging root thing right here. If you harvest this thing in survival mode with your hand, you'll get nothing. You'll need shears to harvest this. Bone meal it, and you get it again. Bone meal it, you get it again. Every single time. That is rooted dirt. The brand new dirt type. New plant alert. Small drip leaf. Check out this plant right here. It looks so good. It's so cool looking. I love the model of this plant. Now, this plant needs to be placed on clay blocks right now, it seems. You can't even place it under the water if the water is too deep and you have like dirt or sand or anything like that. So clay blocks. Clay blocks are the way to go. This plant can be planted in the water uh, or it can be planted on the land, but always clay blocks. Next up, we have big drip leaf. Big drip leaf is the big version of a small drip leaf. If we were to bone meal this stuff, the small drip leaf will then convert over into a big drip leaf. Now, big drip leaf is the cool parkour plant. If you stand on it, eventually it collapses from your sheer weight. That's pretty crazy. You can actually bone meal this plant and make it a little bit taller. If you jump on this plant and then it falls through, like that right there, you'll have to give it time. Eventually, it will pop back up on its own. If you provide a little bit of redstone power to the leaf, then the leaf will actually never fall through. That functionality has already been added over from Java Edition. Just in case you were curious, if you crouch on the leaf without any power, it'll still fall through. The only way to keep the leaf from falling through is going to be redstone power of some type. Brand new bush alert times two. Azalea bush, flowering azalea bush. Check these things out. They still look so amazing. I love how these things look, and honestly, I would not be opposed to saplings being updated and looking more 3D. Like, look at how good that looks. Now, alongside these two bushes, we have two brand new leaf types as well. Azalea and flowering azalea. Hopefully, hopefully, eventually, the devs hear us and get us some azalea wood too. Perhaps, maybe, please. In terms of functionality of these things, right now they don't really do anything. They're kind of like decorational, which is fine. They do look pretty good. Back up on top of the mountain to check out this next one. The moss block and the moss carpet. Now these things are just like they are on Java Edition. Check this out. We bone meal this, we get random plants in here. Azalea bushes, flowering azalea bushes, grass, uh, too tall grass, and moss layers. If we do it again, same thing is going to happen over and over and over again. How about stone? Can you convert stone with the moss block like you can on Java Edition? Well, good news, yes you can, but the stone it needs to be uncovered. So this stone has snow right there, if I remove that, then it can convert, but if it has snow on top of it, it's immune to the conversion. The main tool to harvest this thing is going to be the hoe, and actually, if you think about it, this could be used to instamine things very, very quickly. You place a bunch of moss down by stone, Convert all the stone to moss blocks, dig it out with the hoe. It's pretty crazy. Pixel Rift says a cool video on it. I'll try and remember to leave a card on screen now. Highly advise you check it out. This video is sponsored by Glowberry Gang, the best looking berry in the game, maybe. I'm sorry, sweet berries. Brand new cave vines and glowberries have been added in the snapshot. This right here is the glowberry. Check it out. It looks really good. It's a food item. It's just as good as sweet berries. And then cave vines. And check this out. You can actually climb the cave vines too. This is a new functionality that I forgot to show off in the snapshots. Yeah, cave vines are no longer invisible. You can actually climb these things. This is pretty amazing because, I mean, look at these vines. Without competition. Edition. best looking vine in the entire game they look so good those are definitely cavey and viney and glowy too ah and finally last but certainly not least the spore blossom check out this ceiling flower right here it's pink and it puts particles in the air when you place it on something which is so so cool this is going to add to the ambiance of the lush caves like so much this stuff is so cool I love it. It's a really, really interesting plant. And check out the particles. They start to fill the air over here. They drip out of the flower too. And yeah, they're just green in the air all over here. Now it's really spory over here. That's pretty sweet. Side note, I actually really love the spore blossom. Like so much of such an interesting thing. And I hope in the future, maybe the devs put like different spore blossoms in or things like it that put particles out into the air. I think it's just a really, really cool thing. And it definitely lets you make a, an area feel way more custom. All right, and for Bedrock Beta, can we please shorten the names ASAP? That is actually going to do it. All of the Lush Caves features and the big one, the world got a whole lot deeper, and that's how old chunks are generated. That's really, really interesting. What do you think about the whole old chunks getting Bedrock everywhere down low thing? Do you like that or should it be different? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's Bedrock Beta and you'd like more videos like this, good news. A snapshot came out yesterday. It was pretty small, but it's interesting. 
check out that video. I'll put it on the end card. Today, big thank you to my patrons, Bill Geek and Bruce Renegade Baby. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Guide episode. Goodbye.